Hi, I'm Jonathan Lampell from CG Cookie, and in this video, I want to show you how to model some pipes in Blender 2.8. Now, if you search how to model pipes in Blender on YouTube or just on Google, you'll find lots of different answers. However, I found that most of them are lacking in, in one respect or the other. Now, I want to show you why and also how to solve this in Blender 2.8, because we get some new tools that make the process so much easier than before. The usual way that I've seen is with curves. And this can work okay. Let's just create a Bezier curve, move this over, and let's see, rotate this negative 45 degrees so that it's at a 90 degree angle. And let's say we want to make a 90 degree pipe joint. Then we can move these pretty close together, scale the handles down a bit, just like so. And then we can also extrude these along the sides, so let's say we want them to continue in a direction. Uh, let's just extrude this along the X, and change that back to global. Okay, and then extrude this one along the Y, and there we go. So the way that we would make this into a pipe is go to our curve properties, go to geometry and bevel, and increase the bevel depth. Switch the fill mode from half to full if it's not already and then increase the bevel resolution. There we go, we now have a pipe. But we need to edit this in edit mode, so then we go to object, convert to, and convert to mesh. All right, so pretty simple and extremely fast, but there are a few things that make this less than ideal. First, it's a few steps, but secondly, it gives us all of these different edge loops that we don't need. If we're working with subdivision surfaces, then it's going to just add way too many subdivisions in this area where it's completely unnecessary. And if we're making this low poly for games and not using subdiv, then we're still going to have a bunch of extra vertices that we need to get rid of. And unfortunately, simple solutions like hitting delete and limited dissolve aren't going to work super well because it's also going to delete some of these edges that we do need. And so decimating it or simplifying it unfortunately isn't going to work. Uh, a lot of the time you just need to do it manually. Though you can select just portions of this and then do limited dissolve on you know one piece at a time. But if you have a bunch of curves, it's still tedious. Uh, the second issue over here is that we get some of this overlap right in the center. And you know if you're using subdivision surfaces, this might work out fine. And you can fix this manually by selecting two of these edges, hitting delete and edge collapse, and that's just going to suck everything in towards the middle, and that should work well. But again, that's something that you need to do on all of these, and it can be quite tedious, but it's still a helpful option to know about. Now, if you're using the Mesh Machine add-on, you can use the Unf tool, and that will work quite well. And as, as the name describes, it will unf the bevel. Uh, however, you know, there's still an easier way to do things. So let's just make our pipes using mesh and, and not even use curves to save ourselves a step. And so I'm going to take an edge here, edge loop, shift D to duplicate this along the Y axis. And the first and maybe most obvious way to do this would be to just rotate it and use a bevel. However, that's not going to work. So if we extrude this along the X, and let's extrude it one more time, rotate this 45 degrees, extrude this again, along the Y, rotate that 45 degrees, then it's just not going to end up looking very pretty because we end up you know, changing the width of this. And we can adjust this and, and get it to look OK. Um, but we're still going to get some issues. We can't easily uh, bevel that. Now, if you're clever, we can use a different command instead of rotate. And that'll give us some more options and that is shear. Now you could use this in 2.79, however, it was very difficult to use because it, you had to align the view just right. Uh, but now we have a widget for it that makes it super easy. So I'm going to add an edge loop just to demonstrate here and use the shear tool here near the bottom of the toolbar, shear right there. And now we can just use one of these widgets that's perpendicular to the direction that we want to shear this in. And we can rotate this edge along the edges surrounding it, and so we're not messing up any of the topology. So if we wanted to make a curve here, we can just extrude this along the x-axis, 
shear it. And if we give it an offset of one or negative one, that'll make it an exact 45 degrees. Extrude this along the Y, scale the Y to zero, and there we go. However, problem with this is that we can't really bevel this. Uh, if we do, it looks like we have some weird normals. So let's select everything, shift N, there we go. So if we bevel this, then we're going to get some weird thickness that just doesn't look quite right. And so that's still not an optimal solution. Uh, and so even the, the rotate and move worked a bit better, but still a bit cumbersome because you couldn't really bevel that well either. But luckily there's an even faster solution that works much better. Let's delete these vertices and we can use the bridge edge loops tool. So let's select these two edge loops, go to our specials menu or your edge menu and go to bridge edge loops. By default, it'll just connect the two linearly. But if we increase the number of cuts, then we're going to get a nice bend. And so depending on how close these are to each other, before you bridge them, then you'll get a nice curve. So this works pretty well, and you might have to do a little bit of cleanup if your smoothness factor is, is too high. However, this is a nice, fast way to do things. Now, another really fast way to do things that's probably even better than this is to use the spin tool. That's another tool that was really difficult to use in 2.79 because it worked according to the view angle. But now, since it's an actual tool, it works super well. So let's select the spin tool in the toolbar and it works according to the 3D cursor. So we just need to place the 3D cursor at one of these points. Let's rotate it to the left, just like that. So let's place our 3D cursor right there and choose which axis we want to spin it along. Then select one of these plus buttons, move this over, and you can hold control and snap this to a precise angle. So let's do 90 degrees there. And that was probably way too many cuts. Let's reduce that quite a bit. There we go. And now we can extrude this along the X and keep going. So this makes it extremely easy. And we can do this with any edge. Uh, and the other thing here is that we can place the 3D cursor farther away. As long as it's along the same plane as our edge loop here, then we're going to get a, a good, nice clean cut. Um, but the farther away we place the 3D cursor, it's going to soften the curve. So okay, let's do that again. Hold control to snap to 90 degrees. And now we get a much less sharp transition. And then we can just keep extruding, spinning, snapping uh, very, very quickly. And what's cool about this is this works with the transform orientation. So if we have our object you know, rotated in some weird way, we can also switch this from global to local and it'll continue to work just as we would expect. The very last thing that I wanted to show you that I think would be helpful for working with pipes is how to intersect them easily because it's one of those things that is not always obvious. Uh, and before, maybe you'd have to add in a bunch of edge loops here and actually connect them manually, but that's a lot of work and I don't want to do that. So the way that I'm going to do it is just select one of these pipes, take this edge loop here, and I want to snap that to whatever the highest point is along that pipe, just to make sure that it's exactly right along there. And then instead of doing any, any other um, snapping or anything, I just need to Boolean the two together and I can do that in edit mode really quickly. So first I need to just fill these faces just to make sure that it's a watertight mesh that'll help the operation go a little bit smoother. And then hit three to go into face mode. Alt select to select that face loop and then go to face and intersect boolean and there we go so you can use union uh, difference we'll just cut it out uh, but we probably don't want that let's just do union and that'll leave some vertices in the middle uh, but those are super easy to delete just go to vertex mode lasso select on either side like so delete vertices and let's just make sure that there are no extra hitting control V, remove double vertices. Yep, there was a few. Oh, also probably a bunch here in those, those corners as well. And if you want to make this nice even quads, just add an edge loop, select these two, hit J to connect, or Alt M if they're not merged, merge at center. 
then hit J to connect, and now we have some nice even quads. If you want to make this a super smooth transition and look really good in high resolution, then you can select this edge that's connecting it, hit Control B, bevel that up, the view with one extra segment, and there you go. Set that to smooth shading, and we're all set. And that's it. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new, whether or not you plan on making pipes. Hopefully you learned a new tool or two. And if you want to get a bit deeper than just tips and tricks, and you want to really learn the fundamentals of mesh modeling, I'd recommend going over to CG Cookie and checking out the Mesh Modeling Bootcamp, and that'll put you through all of the rigorous exercises that will teach you how to model like a pro. So check that out, and also be on the lookout for the upcoming tutorial that I'm making right now, which is modeling sci-fi game assets. So keep an eye out for that, and I'll see you next time.